Cycle is proudly supported by My Balanced Life, helping you find inner balance through individual, corporate, and community wellness programs. My Balanced Life offers wellness sessions across many disciplines, including Chinese medicine, which was discussed in this month's book, Seeing Red. Fully licensed and registered practitioners are available for one on one in person treatments and virtual coaching sessions. As a valued book interrupted listener, you can book a free 15-minute consultation at www.mybalancedlife.ca slash book interrupted. That's www.mybalancedlife.ca slash book interrupted to learn more and book your free consultation. You can find the link in the show notes below. Does everybody want to go around and say one thing maybe that they learned or something that was important for them? that they got out of it. I don't know if that feels. Yeah. Before we do that, can I say one thing that shocked me that I meant to bring up when Meredith talking? I was Mm. shocked. I didn't, I don't know if you guys knew this. I didn't know that um, like labs and medical research are only done on males because of women's hormones. I didn't know that. Like, I don't know if anyone else felt super shocked by that, but I was like, that floored me. I had no clue that that was a fact. It's crazy, right? Because then how do you know what pharmaceuticals are going to do? And like the dosing, they just say, okay, well, like this weight, you just like change it to this other weight. But like, it's just, it's just our bodies are a little bit different. I think it's also white men, right? Mostly yeah, white men. It is mostly it's, that's white, a huge problem educated. Too. Um, to add on to what you, your shock, Sarah, around the research, Um, It was a few years ago when I started to consider the possibility of being like a certified group fitness instructor. And all of a sudden I come across like in all this research and getting your certification and doing all that, that all the medical stuff that's put out there in the fitness world around how to achieve like slim waistline and how to build that lean muscle. And it was almost exclusively on the exact same it's white, um, usually around 25 years old, slightly educated males. And I was like this, I was like, so for years, I've been reading about and trying experiments on my own body, anticipating certain results that actually never will occur because all the research was done on men. And that actually led to me discovering there's other people out there in the world that women can actually work out differently and you can use movement as a form of regulating hormones. You spread out your intervals to be about two to three minutes so that your body has time to drop the cortisol and adrenaline. And then you'll start to be able to get rid of like things like belly fat, but it's just not talked about because all the freaking research is on 25 year old white male athletes to go to university. I already knew some of the background about tests being on men and whatever, but so I wasn't shocked about it. It's sad, right? And uh, revealing, but um, mine's really, I feel like simple. I just, uh, I really liked like, I'll read a book and I won't remember like 90% of it, right? I'll know, okay, it was about periods or whatever, right? So, but for the things that stick with me. So this one that stuck with me is to chug water before you have your coffee. That was just, uh, that was just such a hot tip for me. I was like, I can do that. Cause that's what, I guess that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for things that I can easily do that will help me improve my health rather than be like, oh, don't ever eat any grain again or whatever like something crazy or or remove all sugar even though it's very very hidden so you'll never find it and it's an impossible journey but good luck (laughs) right like good luck luck to you you. yeah (laughs) so godspeed um i just like the fact that she's like here's an idea you could consume 16 ounces of water before you even have your first cup of coffee and i'm like yes i can so I love chugging I, water in the morning. I have right, water yeah, on the side. So I'm like, go, 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 go. like just that's what I wanted to ask Kirsten about or Kirsten about too is like because when I read the book, then I was realizing how important or how damaging caffeine could be. And I was drinking like pots of coffee, like coffee oh. all day, all morning oh. until it's all gone. And I and I was like, and and also her reinforcing how important water is, which is something I know, but I've never 
taken seriously. And so I literally drink coffee and then maybe wine, but no water, like none. I was, and by read, like, and then reading the book, I'm like, how am I alive? Like, am I literally just getting enough <laughs> hydration from all in this your coffee? Food? Oh, I, and your yeah, food. That's what I mean. Like I should be by based on my consumption of water at a certain time, I've tried to put it up, but it's not as much as it could be now, but like, um, yeah, like I would go for days and not drink water. But there's like, water in coffee. That's, that's what, what I mean. Getting, you are getting hydration only from, from coffee. coffee. But coffee is a diuretic too, right? So yeah. mm -hmm. fruits, so you get water fruits from and fruit vegetables. and vegetables yeah. have water yeah. in them. I'm um, drinking coffee, wine, and eating poutine. That is it. Oh. So is there potatoes? Potatoes. You are you're living your best life, is what you're doing. And that's called. That's why you're alive. You're living your best. Life. Yeah, yeah. Happy. You are and new really slash, living. Your belly flat is not from menopause. Yeah. <laughs> your belly fat is from the poutine. <laughs> Makes me want a glass of wine right now. I know, right? Why you bring it up? And a coffee, like one in each hand, you know? Yeah, there you go. Um, I really like in the book how she really divides, like she'll say, reinforces a few times the idea of getting proper sleep. That's a huge thing. You know, drinking lots of water, like just the basic things we all know, but it's nice to have like to be reminded about those kind of things well, and, and then for society sure. kind of we all need to be opposite message or like if, when you're in your 20s right like oh you don't need to, like we tell ourselves right we'll go out all night and we'll get up for our job maybe with a hangover like whatever and then for me get, being reminded that sleep is important was like being told again for the first time right being like oh yeah like there could be a really oh, easy course. fix here if i just went to friggin bed <laughs> Mm. Yeah, you know, like two hours earlier. We do have a tendency to like overcomplicate in some areas, right? Like, why is my body responding this way? And instead of just going, "Oh yeah, have I had enough water? Have I had enough regular sleep?" Like, what I have I that. been eating? I yeah, I yeah. dramatic restaurants. Yeah, everything. What could it be? I liked it too that yeah. um, the reminder about all the physical stuff, but also the mental stuff. Because I mean, we yeah. I, that's going to be my that question too. to Kirsten, but that I. You know, I knew a lot of the stuff that was in the book, but I just find the reminder that, you know, me that your mental health actually physically affects you. So those months when I'm like, fuck, like this is the worst and I'm anticipating it and I'm feeling emotional about it and I'm worried and I'm all of that stress and all of that, like, ev you know, everything is going to affect this bit too, like this and this, like my top and my bottom. And so the, the reminder to, try to keep yourself centered, try to meditate, even when you're not feeling like it, do a little bit of exercise, do get your sleep, you know, get your mental state. And then hopefully you can handle, especially for me, because my periods are so horrible with the endometriosis that, you know, trying to do all the other steps, but also try to keep your mental state. And I yeah. think and that was so a good hard. reminder. It's so hard, like, you know, the things, you know that some things will make you feel worse, and sometimes when you're feeling bad, those are the only things you want to do, right? Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's and it's so the reminder is so important being like, well, I'm starting to feel, you know, if you're starting to feel depressed, we're going to be like, oh, I just don't want to go outside at all because I'm depressed. Um, but that's when you should go outside, right? You're like, oh, yeah. just get the coat on and the boots <laughs> and let's go, right? And then you're like, oh, of course, like, because you know it, you know it, but it's just so easy to go with for the comfort and being like, yeah. whatever, I feel bad. I'm just going to have a glass of wine or two or a bottle. Yeah, or have that extra glass of wine yeah. or have yeah. chocolate or have whatever, have the chips or the crap food that you're feeding. But you know, mentally that, no, that's not going to make you. You should be eating the vegetables and the fruit because that's going to make you feel better. But all you want is the chocolate and the wine and the bling and watching Netflix or doing whatever. Totally. Yup. I also really liked um, how she mentioned that conference. I put this in my personal journal that conference that the guy was like, picture yourself having bone cancer and every day do oh, this yeah. guided meditation. And people were like, I don't want to do that. I feel like it's going to give me cancer. And he's like, okay. And then said, now do something for having a healthy life. And then people still didn't buy into it. He's like, but it's the same thing, right? You feel like, and I, it was a good reminder to me because um, I used to like just do these little mantras ever so often to be like, you know, just, especially when the coronavirus started, I did it with the kids, like these little songs and stuff about being healthy and happy and whatever. And 
it just reminded me that like you just I don't know I, I feel like you do these things and then you just get out of the habit of doing like eating healthy and mental health and these kind of like you just get out of mindfulness and health generally and then something like this book comes along you're like oh right mm -hmm. why did it's I like stop it doing provided, that yeah it's like it provided for all of us in some way the reminder of the motivation of why behaviorally we are wanting to make certain choices you know what I mean? Yeah, it was almost like somewhere along the line, it's as if we all experience in some way that derailment of cognitively knowing being in nature or eating healthy food is good. But yeah, like reading, seeing red, it was like, yes, it was that inspirational motivation again. It's like, yeah, that's why I'm downing the flax seeds. Yes, that's why, <laughs> because it's good for me. It was great to have that's the motivation again, right? Yeah book interrupted this is my interruption of trying to get fucking crazy ass red lipstick off for these seeing red pjs <laughs> it's like <laughs> joker <laughs> jesus um book interrupted yeah is there anything that you that you took from this book I, like i don't think i realized until today I think part of the reason why I'm so nervous to do the interview with her is, oh, sorry, I'm gonna, I know I always cry. I don't cry. want to no. cry. I think we should stop, like, even, I was thinking this the other day, sorry to interrupt, Julie, I'd give you, take a breath, but we should just start crying. Because I was thinking about the other day how we're always like, oh, everybody get ready. Here comes an expression of yeah. emotion, right? Yeah, just I don't cry. apologize for laughing. Yeah, right? Like, yeah. I'm gonna laugh, here it comes, right? right? Anyway, sorry, yeah, yeah. I didn't want to seize. Yeah, you, I'm projecting it that it's all Good like one, KJ. Yeah, like it's like I'm like passing on the crying disease to you. <laughs> no, we'll yeah. all cry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's empathy. Like that's but, what women, like lock down the old empathy vibes, girl. <laughs> 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 I just I didn't realize until today or this conversation how important this book in mindset of not over identifying with my anxiety as that is me. And I've been a tremendously, who fucking hate this? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I can't, I'm sorry. I'm, just, I'm really job. bad at being um, looked at. Oh, I know. It just, so it was such an important book because though my mom had mentioned, um, PMDD, premenstrual dysmorphic disorder. And I'm not diagnosed and I don't know, but it's really my anxiety attacks and my agoraphobia attacks. And a lot of them tend to line up in, they always line up with um, premenstrual stuff with me. And I never really put it together until I started really thinking about like these attacks and these, um, yeah, just like all the PMS symptoms, we all know them. Might be partially to do with my female health. And I just never thought of it like that. And it really helped me open my eyes. And obviously we just read the book. So like the maybe the door is just opening, but like how I can maybe move forward and like forgive myself for being so this way. Yeah. I'm sure there's yeah. a lot of women out there that are feeling exactly the way you're feeling right now. I just and felt like hard. I had no control over my life. Because so when you're, when you're talking about forgiving yourself, there's still that, that feeling you have where when you lose control, you feel like it's your fault. And having this information saying, it's not your fault. Yeah. And, and shame on society for not having a framework to teach you that there's something you can do about it yes. yeah that let, like, allow, yeah. allow let, letting you suffer and and in silence in some ways because you have to define yourself too that's what i think one of the things that she talked yeah about too, that mindset you piece. and me and like that you don't have to like I don't have to define myself by my endometriosis or by my yeah. pain or by that that is you know like you wouldn't define your if you had another kind of disease you wouldn't 
you know, it wouldn't, now I'm going to be, okay, I'm not apologizing. <laughs> um, you know. Like the, to mentally, it's very difficult to mentally try to separate yourself from those symptoms, I guess. Yeah, it's like I want to be accountable as a person who, like, if you act in a manner that's like, you know what it's like when you have PMS sometimes and you're just like, mm -hmm. everything yeah. irritates you and you want to be accountable. And also like, it makes me think of the untamed thing too. Like it's a cage, right? Like you don't want to be in that, like this book seeing red, even for me, it's just thinking, I'm just going to put up with this for 10 years. She's like, no, nope. No, none of us need to put up with this. We don't have to put up with what's happening to us every month. We don't, there is a way out. And here are some ways that you can start seeing if really like, easy things to yeah, you know? no, like sleep like, and stop drinking so much coffee. <laughs> yeah. I think something else that I might've heard from what you just said is that, you know, this book offered the possibility that something else is going on where before this book, maybe you just had to think like, am I just an asshole? Like, yeah, like, well, I am, but <laughs> I, I kind of had come to terms with my assholeness, but this is what no, I mean, but though, is it, right? it's not all of me. Yeah. yeah, I was letting it shape my self worth, my worst parts of me that are honestly, I spent way more of my life being the happy, fun person that I am, who doesn't have anxiety, who's really high functioning and gets a lot of shit done. But I judge myself on this, I don't know, 5% of the time that I'm my absolute scariest self and i'm like why am i doing that right why did i choose that mindset like just like the book said it's just i haven't read a self-help book in a while and i forgot to remember this was so important today we've all had so many like learnings and um if anything it's like our self-respect for ourselves and our worth and our bodies have come back and that was a beautiful gift that the author blessed us with it's a matter of human rights. If you've enjoyed these video highlights, listen to the full episode on our YouTube channel or wherever you get your podcasts. Remember to like and subscribe and ring that bell to be notified when new episodes are published. Find out more by going to www.bookinterrupted.com. On Book Interrupted.